What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made this beautiful, plump, cheesy, smoky jalapeno cheese sausage. Coming up! Around these parts, if you go to a barbecue joint that's not Leroy and Lewis, you're likely going to run into the Texas Trinity of brisket, ribs, and sausage. And if you look a little bit closer, you're going to see a lot of paper wrapped briskets, smoky sauce, spare ribs, and jalapeno cheddar sausage links. And for good reason. The combination of jalapeno and cheddar is a match made in heaven. You get a little spicy, a little savory. Mm, can't beat it. So, that being said, today I'm going to show you how I like to make jalapeno cheddar sausage, and it is going to be delicious. Shout out to Adam from Peak Design. Thanks for sending me this travel tripod, dude. This thing is awesome. Game changer. If you work at a barbecue joint, you're very likely gonna have a lot of brisket trim and rib trim on your hands. And the best way to get rid of them is to make yourself some sausage. But for the home cook, if you don't have a bunch of brisket trim lying around, the best thing to do is pick up a pork butt, and some brisket. In a restaurant, I would separate the meat and fat. That way you can get the perfect meat to fat ratio in your sausage. But at home, I'm gonna rely on the intramuscular fat and the fat cap on top of both of these cuts because the brisket and the pork butt are both pretty fatty and the ratio tends to work out very nicely of meat to fat for a nice sausage. That being said, if you want me to talk more about the fat ratios and all that good stuff, I will do that in the next sausage making video. I'm basically going through and cubing this up into little one inch cubes and that is so one, it'll fit into the grinder easier, but also when I pop these in the freezer, these little chunks will freeze a lot quicker than big strips. Four pounds of point cut brisket and four pounds of pork shoulder are going onto this sheet tray. And I'm gonna pop these into the freezer for the next little bit to get nice and chilled. While we wait for our meat to cool down in the freezer, let's go ahead and get our spices together. Starting with some kosher salt, some black pepper, some pink curing salt, some granulated garlic, mustard powder, paprika, we're also gonna go in with our binder, which is going to be some non-fat milk powder, just to make sure everything comes out nice and plump. And I'm also gonna go in with our liquid, which today is gonna to be in the form of some heavy cream. Get that all nice and mixed together. Adding milk or cream to your sausage is pretty common in bratwurst and other sausages like that. And what it's gonna do is add some liquid to make sure we have a nice juicy sausage. It's gonna help hydrate the spices and all that good stuff. It's also gonna add more flavor than just adding ice or water would do. And just like the milk powder, it's gonna add a little bit more protein and fat, which is gonna help us get a really nice bind on our sausage. And the creaminess will play really well with the cheese we've got going into this a little later on. About one hour later, our meat is nicely chilled out of the freezer. And again, it's not frozen solid, but it does have a nice chill on it. And what that's gonna do is just make so it grinds a lot easier and make sure the blade is getting a clean cut. Very similar to making roast beef or something. It's a lot easier if the meat's really cold. So first thing we're gonna do before we send it through the grinder is add in our spice slurry. We're just gonna add our seasoning paste right to this meat and get it all mixed in, make sure it's evenly distributed. And there we have it, all of our liquid spices, salt, seasonings, all that good stuff is mixed in with our meat. We're also gonna go in with our jalapenos at this time. For a batch this size, I've got eight jalapenos, four of which I've taken the seeds out of, and the other four I'm leaving the seeds in. That ought to give us a really nice, strong jalapeno flavor without being too spicy. But depends on your preference. If you want a really mild sausage, you can seed them all. And if you want a spicy sausage, you can leave the seeds in all of them. So now we're gonna send this right through the grinder. We're going through the coarse dye on this meat grinder yet again. Simply enough, we're just gonna send all of this meat through periodically, sending a jalapeno through with it. And that should give us a perfect dice. Oh, look at it go. There we have it, folks. We're just gonna send it through once today because we're going for more of that Texas style coarse grain sausage. But the only thing is, if you're gonna grind it through once, you're gonna have to do a lot more mixing by hand to make sure everything's tacky enough to stay together. So I'm just gonna go through for the next five minutes or so and just kind of mix this all together, get those enzymes released so we get a really nice tight bond on this stuff. This is what we're looking for, folks. Nice, even jalapeno studding throughout. And this is nice and tacky. Really wants to stick together, stick into the hand, sticking together in a big ball like this. And if it sticks together in a ball like this, it's a lot more likely to stick together inside a sausage casing. But we've talked about meat, we've talked about fat, we've talked about salt, seasoning, spices, binders, liquids, all that stuff now. It's time to add the cheese. 
Last time I made cheesy sausage in the Bubba Cole sausage episode, I used Tillamook cheddar off the shelf in my sausage, and it has amazing flavor and worked out really well. But the only problem with cheese like that is that it melts. And when you cut into it, it has a tendency to liquefy all over the board or melt out of the sausage, leaving you with pockets where the cheese once was. Which is not the end of the world, but if you're really looking for that really nice studded cheese look, where you have cheese in every bite that's not running all over the place, the answer is high temp cheddar cheese. I'll have a link in the description for where I got this, but this is exactly what it sounds like. It's cheese that has a really high melting point and is perfect for making sausage. So for a batch this size, I'm gonna go in with one pound of cheddar cheese. And the best part about this stuff is that it's already cubed. Saves me some time, saves me some knife work, which I'm always down for. So we're just gonna mix this in until every bite is nice and cheesy and looking beautiful. And it's at this stage you should definitely go through and make yourself a little test patty, fry it up, make sure your seasoning is all there, make sure it's spicy enough, salty enough, all that good stuff. But I have a feeling that this is gonna come out just fine. You know the drill from here, folks. Meat goes in the stuffer. Oh, it's so cheesy. It smells so good. Nice and plump. Hog casings go on the horn. Don't forget to fondle the meatballs. Tie it off. And then we case. And as always, the name of the game here is not popping your casing. But sometimes they have natural little holes in them. So let's try that again. Tell you what, folks, sometimes these casings, no good. Yep, look at that, just wants to rip. Yeah, there's a perfect example. Look at that hole right there. Can't be having that. The name of the game here is getting these casings as plump and as full and as taut as possible without popping them. That's the number one way to get a perfectly crispy bite. Make sure that skin is nice and tight. You can make a big rope, link them up. I've talked about this in other sausage making videos. I like to make individual links so I can make sure each one of them is perfect. And for the beginner, I highly recommend it. Nice and plump, you can see some cheese and jalapenos poking their way through. And as always, folks, I've got links in the description for everything I've used in this video and every other video. It's a nice uh, not being covered in snow this week. And as always, you can make these as big or as small as you like. I'm not gonna judge you based on the size of your wiener. And just like that, we've made our way through. Got this cute little nub at the end. Oh, isn't he cute? Cute little guy. I'm gonna call this one Cole. And just like that, we've got eight pounds of jalapeno cheddar cheese sausage. I think it's time to fire up the pit. sausages cooked off we're gonna do a bit of a cold smoke nothing too low not too cold but the name of the game is trying to get that meat and the casing cooked through without rendering any of the fat that way we're gonna get a really nice snappy casing while maintaining the juiciest sausage possible and getting that really nice deep red color we're looking for so I got this thing going at about 150 degrees and we're gonna let these smoke for the next three four hours Ooh. and cooking at these low temperatures is why we included the pink salt in the spice mixture. That's gonna keep everything safe, make sure no one gets any botulism. And we should end up with some nice plump wiens. Boop. Always make sure your wieners aren't touching each other or themselves. Otherwise you're gonna end up with some smoky bald spots on there. And we don't want that. Little coal. Two hours later and these bad boys are looking nice and red. Got some really good smoke on them. We're simply gonna go through and flip them all over, make sure they're cooking evenly. Ooh, yeah. I'll tell you what, there's something about a nice red sausage link. Very nice, start seeing that cheese. Mm -hmm. And this is always a great time to go in and uh, clean up your weenie. Cause everybody loves a clean weenie. Also, we don't want the soot from the grates to discolor the sausage and disrupt the smoke adhesion. All right, back into the smoke they go for another hour or so, and then we'll bump up the temp. Right at hour four, these bad boys are looking good. Nice and plump, that beautiful red color. Got plenty of smoke on there. These are looking great. So now it's time to pull them off. Would you just look at it? Oh, what a beautiful sight. Off the cooker they come, and these bad boys are going right into an ice bath. 
The ice bath is gonna help stop the cooking process, shrink up the casings, and seal in all of the moisture. Just like slicing into a piping hot brisket, you're gonna let go of a lot of steam, which is just the moisture inside the meat leaving. So by cooling it down rapidly, or in the case of a brisket, doing a really long rest, this is gonna yield a much better product. And it's also a great time to clean your weenies. Now that these are all thoroughly chilled, I'm going through and giving them a wipe down to get off all excess water in the old clean wean treatment. Because look at that, we don't need that on our sausage. What we're left with is a beautiful, plump, red, perfect looking sausage. These are feeling real nice. But behind me, I have got a smoker fired up to about 300 degrees and I'm gonna cook these all the way through and we're gonna see how they came out. It's also at this stage that I would vac seal these and freeze them for your next barbecue party or event or whatever you've got going on. If you make a big batch of these, right after the cold smoke, throw them in a vac seal, toss them in the freezer. These are straight up preserved at this point with the smoke and the salt and the nitrites. These will last for a long time, especially if you seal them and freeze them. But for now, I'm getting kind of hungry. Nice and plump. Oh, don't forget about baby coal. 30 to 45 minutes later, these bad little boys are done. This is a mixture of pork and beef, so you want to aim for an internal temp of anywhere from 145 to 160. These are right around 150, but when it comes to telling when a sausage is done, you really just want to feel it. When it's nice and plump and feels like a stiff Sunday morning, that's when you know they're ready to pull off. We're gonna let them rest for about 10 minutes or so just to cool down a little bit, and then we'll slice in. Tell you what, folks, this is one of the more plump links I've made on the channel. I'm telling you, these things straight up bounce. So plump. Whoop, I think I popped that one. Oh, yep. Don't be bouncing your sausages, folks. Yoink. Oh, beautiful. Feel that snap on the knife already. And that's what we're left with, folks. That beautiful cheese staying right intact. A nice jalapeno bite, clearly a nice juicy link. But does it have the snap? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. It's cheesy, it's jalapeno-y. Mm. That is delicious. The combination of beef and pork in a sausage gives you a texture and a flavor like no other. That's the Texas style sausage right there. Honestly though, I kind of wish I went full seed on those jalapenos. This could use a little more spice. But that's it. Oh. Mmm. Hmm. It's everything you want in a sausage right there. Beautiful. Look at this one. I named this one Cole. <laughs> Isn't he cute? Any reference? He, well, he was the one I stuck the probe in. Ooh. Give me a little coin. Oh, good. Look at that cheesy jalapeno goodness for you. Thanks, dude. <laughs> I'm aware. You never call me, dude. I know. Good cheesy coin. Mm -hmm. I love a good jalapeno cheese sausage. I tell you what. Mm hmm. That is not lacking in the cheese department. That high temp cheddar is sharper than I would have guessed. Yeah. Which is nice. I could eat this all day. Yeah, this is good. Oh boy, so cheesy. Beep beep. This one's for you, bud. Come here. Oh, oh. Good girl. <laughs> All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how I like to go about making jalapeno cheese sausage. I highly recommend giving this one a try. This is a winner. But if you enjoyed this video, be sure to let me know by hitting that subscribe button. It helps me out so much. We just hit 30K on the channel, and I cannot thank you enough. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to hit me up on Instagram, at ChudsBBQ. I love to see what y'all are cooking. Let me know in the comments below what you want to see me cook next. Head over to ChudsBBQ.com for all pit inquiries, waitlists, and all that good stuff. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace!